I hope you're all excited to uh, actually get some stuff done on the computer today. We're gonna we're gonna go for a couple different topics today. We're gonna cover IRC Internet Relay Chat. We're gonna use the software called Chatzilla inside of the Firefox, and you all can start talking to each other without actually using your voices. We're gonna look at the CCOM wiki. We're gonna do a little bit of it. It's MediaWiki, otherwise known as the software that runs Wikipedia. And I'll be doing the last section, if we as much time as we have, we'll be logging into a computer at CCOM. It's a Linux computer. You'll all be able to see each other on there. And as we go along, I'll be using the wiki to take notes on that section. If you guys ask questions and whatnot, and I have an answer, I'll put them in there. We'll be learning the wiki, not necessarily just in this, this class, but throughout the course. Uh, we'll be using the wiki to document stuff in addition to the notes that I'm putting up on the web. And you guys can change, alter, fix things if you find typos or want to add stuff to it. We'll be learning it by, mostly by doing. So you're going to see this hopefully a little bit every day for the rest of the semester you have in here. And we'll be using a tool for the logging of that computer called Research Tools that's called Putty, which will provide us with a secure login that's encrypted. So those are the major topics for today. But before I forget, next Thursday uh, will be a short day. I think that's September 8th, because I'm giving a brown bag seminar over in Earth Sciences, which reminds me I have to give them my title for my talk. But there's brown bag seminars after Thursdays, and that's for the Earth Science Department, or ESCI. And those are over in James Hall right after this. Uh, it's kind of a tight squeeze between how much time we have here and when the brown bags start. So if you want to go to those, you have to basically just head straight over. They, unfortunately, our scheduling doesn't really work well for those. But those are in uh, James Hall. And Professor Margaret Betcher is the one who runs those brown bags. Uh, so if you want to get on the mailing list and you're not, you can talk to, to Sue over in the science department or Margaret. And I can introduce you. Uh, so it's James Hall. And then one thing I forgot to do last time, when you guys talk to me, uh, if you ask for Professor Schwer or Dr. Schwer, I, I'm not going to react. If you just refer to me as Kurt, you might actually get my attention. So in the class, just use my name. Don't worry about titles and sir. I don't tend to notice. You can serve me for a while, and I'll, I'll be oblivious. So uh, we tend to use first names in CCOM. So you probably hear that in all of your classes. But uh, don't worry about titles like professor and things like that. OK. So this time, I have a little bit of notes for you guys if you want to have them up as you're going. This crazy, horrible URL up here, if we go to wiki, let's see if I can find them here. If you go to, it might be easier to type wiki.ccom.nh, that'll be the link. But you don't have to follow that right away. We're going to end up going on to what's called IRC, and I can paste you guys the link. So we'll, we'll get back to this in a bit. But uh, start up Firefox, and we'll go ahead and jump into installing the Chatzilla client as a plugin to Firefox. So I want to get you guys up and running on this Internet Relay chat so that when somebody doesn't understand something, you can ask a question there. We have a question in the back. We will. Great. I'll come back there in a second and run through, make sure everybody gets logged in and set up. But the idea is, if you have a question, you can type it in there. I may or may not see it on IRC as we're working, but you all are welcome to, to have discussions within that space during the class. And you can log them and save them for later on. So if you come back to this material and need it you know, two months from now or doing a quick homework assignment, you have the logs from this class that you type and that all of your classmates type. So if I say something confusing, you guys can figure out what it is that I need to say better without me even being a part of that conversation. If you want to add something that you think is important to the rest of the class, it's up to you guys to decide how you want to use that channel. I'm going to use it to paste you guys links. So I'll send you a URL for a web page or something like that through that. But it's up to you guys how you want to use it for the rest of the time that I'm not pasting something into it. So does everybody have Firefox up and going? We all have? Uh, great. OK. Firefox has a plugin engine in it where you can add little tools to it. And the first tool that you're going to get is Chatzilla. So I'll write up here big because it's a weird name. So if you search for Chatzilla, you can it'll come up. 
and you click on the add-ons link and you're going to see something like this. Go ahead and click the add to Firefox. Unfortunately, I've already added it and I had, didn't have time to go and remove it. But click the add button. We'll see what it does to me, even though I've already got it installed. Oh, good. Okay. So it gives you a pop-up saying, install add-ons only from authors you trust. And this is a big point. If you install random add-ins from strange people, strange things will happen to you. Um, this one, Chatzilla is used by a lot of people. It's a fairly standard one. All the ones I show you are, are very safe. If you are interested in plugins and are unsure, ask our IIT team or ask uh, me, the professor, if, you think, if I think a plugin is good to install or not, and I can go check for you. But go ahead and click install now. And the key thing is with Firefox, when you install a plugin, it doesn't work until you restart Firefox. So I've definitely been confused before when I've done a bunch of installs and then I come back a half hour later when I get back to a task and I'm wondering why the plugin doesn't work. So we're gonna restart Firefox. And with our new machines, it goes really fast. And that top left corner of Firefox has got this little menu and I could not find any of the plugins in here. Uh, so if someone knows where the plugins are in this mode, let me know. I don't. But if you go to Options, Menu Bar. So I'll leave that up there for you guys. That menu bar is going to change the look of Firefox a little bit and give you a menu across the top that's got the option that we need. So we click on this yellow orange tab up the higher options and then menu bar. So go ahead and turn on that menu bar. You've all done that. And it's added a new section called tools. At the bottom of tools is uh, the chatzilla tool. And it brings up something like this. And it's going to look, it should look exactly the same for everybody except for in the bottom left hand corner down there, it's going to say your CCOM short username. So not your full name, but the name that you log in with and it's attached to all your files. So from there, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to, we're now going to log in to a server. So the way IRC works is there's a server and there's several tens of thousands of servers in the world and each of those servers hosts a whole bunch of chats. And we're going to use a server that's pretty well known. It's used by a lot of open source software authors and users and it's done by a group that their whole goal is to get communities working together for open software. And it's called Freenode. Uh, they even have an on the web browser based thing where you can just go and chat on their, their channels. But we're going to create a channel just for us. And since our class is open, you may or may not see other people from other places pop into our channel and chat with you. You can always tell them to go away if they're driving you crazy. But we're going to go ahead and log into the free node service and then we're going to join a chat. So I'll show you guys how to connect to that. So the command is attach and this will be in the notes too. So so we're going to do attach irc.freenode.net. And there's a large number of donors and there's a couple of large companies that support it too. Uh, if you go to their website, I think they have a whole like donate sponsor page that's going to go. So if I hit enter, hopefully I've done everything right, I should connect up. And it's going to say attempting to connect. Now notice. We haven't typed any passwords and we haven't seen anything about security. You're now walking into a land. Anything that you type can and will be logged. Don't use, if you ever use a password in the system, do not use any password to use anywhere else. This stuff is very open. It's meant to be easy and it's not meant for secure conversations. Uh, if you want to do secure conversations, Soapbox and things like that are much better. Google Chat works pretty well. This is all open, it's meant for sharing, and so just remember, be on your best behavior, speak as if you're in public, and all will be well. Okay, so now we wanna join a, uh, a channel. So if you go up to IRC and join channel. Uh, go ahead and select join. 
And you should see something like this build up. It's going to have a list of uh, 10,000 channels that you could join. So let's see if I do this right. Uh, we want to join UNH Research Tools. So I'm going to go ahead and hit join. And there's no spaces in that name. So if we do this right, we should. Oh, I see a lot of people joining. This is great. <coughs> Now you should see all the same people that I see. And then join channel, and then type manage research tools. Now well, you guys can have a big group chat about anything related to the class. And the idea is here is uh, use it as you see fit. It's, uh, you can log it. If you go to Chatzilla preferences, uh, you can. There's a logging uh, option under general. So if we go to preferences. Under general, you can say log this view. It will log to the computer you're currently on, unless you tell it otherwise. So you may be able to specify a file path under global settings of where it's going to log to. But you can log this, and then it's, it's a part of your notes for the class. So if somebody gives you some tip on there something I've left out that you guys think so someone knows and wants to just shout out in the chat room, that's great. So what I can do, for example, is uh, if I go to the research tools class, I can now, I can paste that link and hopefully on everybody's screen should be that link and you can click on it and go to that web page. If somebody wants more information or like, for example, someone finds a really good Wikipedia article on something that I'm talking about, uh, feel free to post that stuff in there, ask questions of each other. You can ask and you know answer the question before I even get to it. So that's it's totally okay. If you're uncomfortable with English, take your time, write out what you want to say, and uh, then hit enter when you're comfortable with it, if you, know, if you don't want to shout out in class right away. I'm hoping a really great tool, we use this during the Gulf oil spill, the Deepwater Horizon, the team at NOAA, uh, the six of us, spent three months living in a chat session like this. I've never met any of the people that were on my team. We just spent 12, 14 hours a day in chat. Uh, it's a really handy tool. You can keep it up in the corner while you're working on the class. You know, you guys can collaborate even if some of you are in Dover, Kittery, or Newmarket, or wherever. If you have internet and you have people around in chat, you can just create groups on the fly of, you know, let's work on the homework together. For the rest of the semester, I'd like you guys to log into that this chat every time we're in class. It's the way I'm going to see your participation is through the chat. I really expect to see at least one comment on the chat session from each of you every class, even if it's hi. That's OK. If you get that in there, I'm going to check that off as uh, you were in class or you were you know, at sea, but remotely logged in. And if you're not here for research crews or stuff like that, just let me know ahead of time and we'll, uh, we'll get you the chat log so you can come back through and see what people are talking about. Okay. So, yes? Where is the log file? The log file is on your computer someplace. If you look under preferences and then global settings and you scroll down here, it's hiding somewhere in there, and you can change it. Like most software, there's a mil uh, million little options that you can change, and you can change where it puts the log files. So if you have a share that you're mounting, or a USB drive, or something like that, you can tell it to go into the share and put stuff there. And just to give you a hint, when you see Goat Bar, that's a nickname that I use when I'm working. And uh, I'll have that logged in, so I've got my laptop logged in and logging the chat there in addition to Schwer, which is me working on the laptop with you guys. So I can have multiple instances of myself running around, and you'll see that with some people who have various reasons to have different chat agents that are doing different things for them. People actually write little robot software that goes in and will do things. If we were working on a class project together and somebody checked in a new version of the software into the central server, we could see a message appear in here. It said, hey, so-and-so updated the, uh, the, 
this source code file that, that's going to you know, deal with our ship and do something or other. There's lots of things that you can do with this, and we'll actually go and write some scripts later on that will actually, from software, from the command line, put stuff into this chat so that when you see you know, uh, a ship come into port, you can have a message come in. When a ship gets over a certain speed, you can put a message in there. When the weather sensor upstairs reads the temperature above or below some threshold, you can put a little weather warning out. It's a place where you can actually write software that will talk to this and give people notices. And just to let you know, this isn't the only wiki software around. There's lots of other ones. I'll add some list in here of ones that might work for you. If you're a Mac user, there's a couple that are OK. Uh, there's also some Linux ones. I haven't had a chance to dig into them. The nice one thing about Chatzilla is if you have Firefox on any of your computers and can install a plugin, you can have it on Linux, Mac, or Windows PCs. Uh, and you can use the same Chatzilla client. It's pretty powerful. Just to let you know, there's lots of other group chats. I mentioned this before, but I wanted to make sure you guys realize that I'm giving you IRC for a reason, and that's to get you chatting with other people outside of class too. There's other channels there, like if we're gonna use a tool called GDAL, uh, which is for transforming data formats, and the authors of that software are in one of those chat groups, and there, there's almost always someone who works on that code in the chat room at all hours. So if you wanna to talk to the author of the software, in real time, this is the way to do it. To be able to chat with the folks who are actually building your software, have discussions with them, uh, it could be quite enlightening to go find out the, the why and the how of your software. Now, another thing I wanna show you is with this chat, if you wanna paste one or two lines of text in, it works okay in this, but oftentimes it's better to paste a link to some big block of text. So say you've written up some source code and you want to share it with a bunch of people. There are services called pasters. There's a link right here to a particular paste system. There's lots of them. You can use any one of them that you want. I tend to use this one, not for any particular reason. And it gives you a scratch pad. So you can write whatever you want in here. You know, we could just type some junk or we could go over to pick a random web page. So if we went over to some wiki and grabbed some junk, so we wanted to copy some code and I wanted you guys to see it, we're going to go back to this paster tool, pastebin.com, and I could paste all that in there. I can give it a title, demo for research tools and you can create an account here they're free uh, just remember again this is a public service your pastes are not private even if you mark the little private button there's probably people who can see your paste that you didn't want them to you have to be uh well they thought it was spam so i have to type some characters submit so what it does is it gives you this little url so i'm going to copy that if i go over to chatzilla and I now paste in here. You guys can all now see that link and click on it and go see whatever it was that I pasted. So if you have something that's a, you know, a couple hundred lines long, you want to send to a friend, discuss when you're chatting, this is a really great way to do it. If you, uh, sometimes emails, especially the CCOM email system does not like certain types of source code coming through your email because it thinks it's a virus. You can paste stuff into a paste system and then send the URL link to the, the site, and that will go through our mail system. So if you're sharing little bits of text, this is a great place to do it. And if you sign up for an account that's free, uh, it's an easy place to just have a record of the paste that you keep. There's other systems that don't take accounts, and you will never build up a record of all your paste. So if you pasted something last year and you can't remember it, you're kind of out of luck. But here, at least, there's a, a history of all your paste. So I skipped doing introductions of everybody last class, and I wanted to wait for today to have everybody introduce themselves. But we're not going to do it using your voice. We're going to go around the room. Uh, I'm going to have each of you, you know, wave at everybody else here. But I want you to say hi and what your full name is on IRC. So each of you is going to go around the room, and we're going to do that. We're going to start in the back corner with Bree. Uh, introduce yourself and give a wave. Uh, 
uh, to the class. Great. Next. And I'm going to be working. I'm not very good with names, guys, so I apologize if I screw up your name completely and often, but hopefully this will help. Great. Thanks, Tim. You guys are uh, getting ahead of the game. Awesome. I love it. <laughs> Front row. Uh, I'm going to start on the uh, side towards the door. Awesome. Okay, so this is a tool for you all to use uh, throughout the class. Feel free to, you can even ask me a question up there too and just shout at me to go look up the IRC. So I'm going to show you guys the CCOM wiki a little bit here as uh, you work along. And that's why I have two laptops so I can. Uh, Oh, thanks for uh, starting the chat off. <laughs> Excellent. So go ahead and jump to the CCOM wiki, which is going to be just wiki. And if you're outside of CCOM, you won't be able to get to this uh, without tunneling. And we'll show you tunneling in a, in a couple of sessions. Right now, just it only works from inside of CCOM. This is our, our goal here is to create a space that's got information that you are likely to need all the time or need infrequently or every once in a couple of years and it's for all of us to edit and work on. There are some pages that are more administrative and we kind of ask you to not edit those too much but in general if you want to create a wiki page for anything that you do for your research or work at CCOM or stuff at the university or things that impact student life this is a place where you can make pages of links you can do whatever you need to do uh, within the constraints of fitting in our community. So, you know, it has to fit within our guidelines of what's acceptable at CCOM, but that pretty much includes most things that you would chat with, with people in the hallway, um, anything you do for your research, and especially anything that gets in the way with computers or technology. Uh, this is a great place to document uh, how to work with software, um, who to talk to for, for certain tasks, uh, you may also hear from this, the uh, IT team, if you ask them a question, they're going to ask you, did you look in the wiki first? And if you didn't, you might get a sad face and they might wave at you as you go off to your computer to go search first. And if the answer is not in there, it's up to us as people who work at CCOM or our students here to jump in and add things to the wiki. So I'm going to use it throughout this class to create notes for the class that I'm going to be using a couple different spaces for notes. Some are going to be more formal that I'm working towards getting a book out that's going to be a, a long form of the class that's a, a free uh, set of notes. Inside, we have a place that I want you guys to be able to edit, make comments, um, you know, create pages as you work on tasks for this class or for other classes. And then we'll be uh, building stuff up inside of the chat room. So I'm going to give you a quick tour the first thing I want you all to do is over here there's a login create account button. This thing is super high security because, well it's not. What you can do is you can create an account. Just click create account. There is nothing special about this. Just go ahead, type in a username, type in a password. Please do not use your CCOM password. Please use something else. Uh, it doesn't have to be super secure because anyone can make edits even if they're not logged in, but we prefer that you make edits as you're logged in. It tends to work best if this username is the same as that username in your chat session uh, and the same as your short username in Windows. That way, it's just a lot nicer as a community to see an edit by somebody, be able to go find that person and ask them because you know, if you post something about your particular country or group that you're from, some bit of knowledge, people might want to come chat with you about that and follow up on it and create some discussion. And if you use a name and they can't figure out who you are, then it becomes kind of challenging. So go ahead and create yourself an account and get yourself logged in. I'm going to go ahead and log in here. And if you look up here real quick before you go create your account, right now it just says an IP address. Uh, so it will track what computer you are on, but if you're on a random, like one of these computers in the classroom, we won't know who made the edit. So I'm going to go ahead and log myself in. And so I'm now logged in.
We can always reset the information uh, with the IT team if we need. Please, when you make edits, double check that you're logged in. We get a lot of edits that are not logged in, and it's hard to figure out what's going on sometimes. We get a change, and it's confusing, and then we, we don't know who to ask. So then we go to the IT team, we figure out your IP address, and then we come find you. But that usually means that we don't follow up on it. And that means that bad information is there. So on the left are some helpful links and some not helpful links. If you click random page, I'm not really sure why that's helpful. It gives you a random page from the wiki, of which is probably not very interesting to you. Um, if you're really bored, you can sit there and click the random page link. But um, yeah. So uh, a really one of the best ones is recent changes, especially when you guys are working in a class on any material. Um, you'll see. Uh, I tend to be one of the biggest, heaviest uh, users of the wiki, <laughs> shall we say. Uh, it was my doing that the wiki exists, so I try to lead by doing. You'll see, it'll give you a couple options, so the difference, so it'll show you uh, what changed between revisions on a particular update. It'll give you a history for that file, so you can see all the changes by whoever. It'll tell you who did it. There's a, a section for talking about that person or to that person. You can get a list of contributions from that person. You can see some of the things that I've been working on, which is mostly research tools. Right now, it's, it's locked to people who are not CCOM people can definitely not get into it. And we ask, if you're going to copy some text in the CCOM wiki outside, find the person who wrote it and get their permission. Because this material is meant to to be for CCOM and the students here. So those of you who are not CCOM, that, that includes you too. It's meant to be a resource inside. It's not meant to be like Wikipedia for everybody. So if somebody wants to write something that isn't necessarily public, it's okay to put stuff in here that's not super private, but we don't really want to put it up on our web page. Like if you're figuring something out, we want people to be able to put up uh, partial work, our thoughts, maybe something that isn't even correct, because you're working on it. You know, say you're building a new procedure for analyzing sediments, and you have some ideas, like three ideas, and you don't want to share them with the world, but you want to talk about them inside of CCOM. That kind of stuff can go on the wiki. Don't, it's not necessarily good to share what's in here without chatting with people first. Let's see if I can find, okay, here are some changes that are not for me. So you can see, like here's Jordan Chadwick working on the IT group. Jordan was setting up the server for us. Brianna's working on uh, the data logger system. So you can basically keep up with what's going on at CCOM sometimes by looking in the changes. If you're working together in a group and you want to see what the latest thing that the group has done, is an easy place to find them. There is also special pages on the left here, which gives you all kinds of funky wiki stuff. And it's going to show you, you can get a list of all the pages. So if we click that, we have a lot of pages. They go on and on and on. But if you're trying to find something and you have, a lot of times you don't know the word to, to use, like if it's a sonar thing and you're not familiar with uh, the terminology, you can look through here until you find something that might meet, meet your needs. Like uh, TIFF files. There's a page on TIFF files. I have no idea. Which isn't very useful yet, but uh, you can add to it. So it's a great place to sort of dig through and find what kind of material is on there. Um, there's an important one, ice skating. We have a page on ice skating. That uh, We have a tradition that every year we take all the Jebco students ice skating over, uh, at, uh, over at the gym. It's a lot of fun. All right, so back to special pages. So take a peek through here. There's all kinds of different stuff in here. Um, statistics, it'll tell you generally about our wiki. It'll tell you uh, that there's been almost 60,000 page views. We have 11,000 page edits. We have lots and lots of pages. We have 505 pages so far. And it really, it comes down to what you guys want. Like here are the most viewed pages. The main one, of course, forms. If you're a CCOM person and you go on travel, that's where you get your travel forms from. Administrative resources, when CCOM has a meeting, the meeting minutes go in there. If you're new to CCOM, you read the general in brief. I highly recommend, if you haven't read this, read the general in brief. 
it describes a lot about CECOM in lots of detail. It's not brief, even though it says brief. So the key thing is, if we go over, I'm going to go to research tools, and there's a little search box on the left here. And if I type research tools, you're going to see any place where the word research and tools appear in a page. And some of it's not going to mean a whole lot. Uh, C4 characterization research shows up, which isn't necessarily what I would be looking for for that search. But for example, like Tide tools, if you're working with Tide, uh, ben Smith here, Captain Ben, has written all kinds of interesting Python code to work with Tide data, trying to understand what we should or shouldn't do with Tide data, and trying to create resources for you all when you get to Summer Hydro if you're taking that class. Uh, so you'll find all kinds of interesting things there, but we'll look at research tools. Jump on over to that page, and we'll take a quick peek through what's here. If there was a discussion, like if you want to have sort of a behind the scenes, like what should be included on this page or a proposed material, you can always click on that. And you just click discussion, you can start typing stuff, research tools. And you know, it doesn't have to be the most amazing text ever to be helpful to the wiki. At the bottom, you can type a summary of, we can just say a kickoff of talking. And it's pretty boring. And then you can hit show preview. If you just type text, text will appear. So you don't have to be super whizzy, powerful, smart about how to make wiki pages look fancy. Like our front page is pretty fancy looking. I don't know how to do that. Someone else did. But it doesn't mean that you can't contribute just straight text. So if you just paste stuff in here, it will go in and work. So once you see that you what you want is done, if we want to make something bold, you can highlight it, and there's a couple little tools to help you. Wiki has a special markup, and if you put three single quotes around some text on either side, and then we hit preview, that text becomes bold. If you do something with two single quotes, it becomes italics. You can insert links. You can even, it has a little signature thing. It's like really weird cursive stuff is trying to be their idea of an icon for signature. This really weird character right here, it's like two dashes and four tildes get turned into your name with a date and time. So we just hit save page. There's now a beginning of discussion. It's completely pointless, but it's the wiki. It's okay to, to work sometimes and just try out a page. You can always create yourself like your name and test and just try things out. It's OK to try things out on the wiki. So if we go back to page, you can hit edit for the whole thing. You'll see the whole thing. And if you screw up and accidentally delete a whole page or something like that, we have all of the old versions. So if I accidentally deleted a whole bunch of stuff and wanted it back, if we click on the history button, all the old versions are there. So if we want to go back and see this version that was from not very long ago. There's the old version. It gives you a special link up here with this really weird ID number. This page is never going to change. It's always in the history. So we have every version of every page. So if somebody deletes something and then you want it back, it's, it's still there. With this class, I'm not going to worry too much about the details of all the fancy wiki editing. Uh, you'll probably hit it as you go if you start making wiki pages. Um, you can also try stuff here if you want to edit Wikipedia and make an article better. Like for example, um, if we do, let's see if it's still as bad, Wikipedia multi-beam sonar. This wiki page is, if you know anything about multi-beam sonars, there's a lot more to say about multi-beam sonars than this little tiny page. And last time I read through there were a couple of things wrong in there that weren't really the way multi beams are. You can go edit this, but sometimes it's a little scary to jump into Wikipedia. I made some edits and then some editor came along and told me I was all wrong, but that's okay. You can try things out, get used to editing a Wikipedia type page here at CECOM. We're not gonna tell you that you're wrong unless you do something really crazy. 
I generally work side that you do anything, even if it's got bad grammar, bad spelling. It's okay. <laughs> like I've actually created a Wikipedia page here first in our wiki, got it so that I liked it, and then I copied it to Wikipedia. So it was a place to try something out. If you've got something, especially those of you from other countries who might want to add material about things that are specific to your country because there's a lot less content for some countries, try it here. You can edit a Wikipedia page, build it up here with pictures and the whole, the whole deal, and then once you like it, you can copy it over to Wikipedia. So it's been very handy because I did one for a big NASA scientist and I didn't want him to see my drafts. So I really wanted him to see a final pretty page that looked very nice and had all the right formatting, but I didn't know how to do that. So I did it on our uh, internal wiki. So if we search for Peter Smith, there is Peter H. Smith. All the links are kind of broken, but that's okay. You know, I was just trying to figure out, I wanted to have some good text and some basic links and have it looking nice before I uploaded it. So this guy ran one of the NASA missions that I was on and uh, I offered to do his page, at least the start form. So we're going to use this throughout the class. I'm going to be editing and taking notes in this wiki today if we have some time. Uh, I think we're still good on time. So we're going to go ahead and log in to the class Linux server and we're going to start using the command line. And uh, I think this will be the most number of people logged into one computer at CCOM ever. Uh, so this is the first time we've done something like this. And I'll take notes as to what we do in the wiki. If you guys have any commands that don't work for you, and a lot of times L's and 1's, O's and zeros get confused, I'll paste them into the, the chat uh, as we got going. And we'll get going on actually using Linux and trying out uh, some of the command line stuff. It takes a long time to get to know all the details of how to get around a command line and use the bash shell. Remember, when you're taking this class, I might have been doing this for 20 years, but each and every one of you can teach me something I don't know. There are so many tools in Linux and in these shells and things I've never tried that every one of you can teach me something too in this class. There's, uh, there's just tons that you can do. So don't feel bashful about talking about things that you figure out. I do wanna hear everything that you tried that worked that uh, is unlike what I did. There are some really wild ways to do stuff that might actually be better than what I'll show you. So I'm not gonna show you the perfect solution to everything but I'll show you a way to get things done in Linux. And just to let you know, you can do some of the stuff in uh, Sigwin on Windows. I haven't had the best luck with Sigwin. It does work, but it gets a little tough sometimes. I'm hoping that by teaching you guys Linux, I give you a full environment that you can take with you. And at the end, I'll, I'll give you the file that actually gives you the server that you can take home and run for free for the rest of however long VMware supports VMware. So you should be able to take this with you, go use it on your laptop, uh, take it home to other countries. Uh, it's just generally for your use. So you'll be able to copy the exact environment you had in class. Because there's nothing like going home and finding out that you don't have the something that you can't figure out on the computer at home uh, when you really want to get some work done. Let's pick up the chat. So on your desktop, there should be a command called putty. And PuTTY is a Windows version around uh, a protocol called SSH, Secure Shell. And it was one of the first shells that encrypted everything going across uh, your network. What it will let you do is you can connect to the server. Every text that you type on your computer will go to the server. And anybody who can grab the network traffic, the data that went between your computer and the server, they can't read it. So that way, if you type passwords, things like that, it's all protected. Uh, there are other ways to connect to servers, and unfortunately, UNH will actually try to teach you some of them. Don't do them. If you ever hear the word Telnet, run away. So if you see Telnet and you want to type in your password, don't do it. No Telnet. If you type your password in tel into a Telnet session, a hacker will get your password and they will use your account for things you don't want them to do. Um, I've had to go through a NASA building of several hundred people and try to convince people to stop using Telnet by showing them their password from the hacker's log files. FTP, if you use file transfer protocol, a lot of you probably have used it in the past, if you ever type your password into that, 
your password is going to get grabbed by somebody. Please do not use FTP if you can help it. We have an FTP server here. You're not going to type a password. It's all done anonymously. If you do this without typing your password, it's okay. But if, if an FTP server or a Telnet session ever asks for your password, just close it. Just end it right there and go find someone from IT to help you out. Because either of those is basically giving your password to the bad guys. It's possible that you're in an environment where it's okay, but that's the rarity. This is the way that so many people have had their accounts hacked. It's just, it, it's easier to say don't ever use Telnet or FTP and teach people the, the ways that are always going to be safe. So those are my security. If you learn anything in the class, those two things right there will save your bacon. And if that translates to some of your languages, I, I kind of doubt it, but it will, it will definitely save you. So we're going to go ahead and run Putty. And you all are going to see, how many of you actually used Linux before? One or two. Any of you used Sigwin on Windows? All right. It's quite OK. In this class, I expect you to know nothing about command line. And it's my job to make you guys comfortable with it. Your job is just to follow along and try your best. And if things are confusing, it's OK. We're going to come through this material again and again throughout the semester, trying to make it so that it becomes easy. It's not easy material, but if, if we just see it again and again, I hope that a lot of stuff will just slowly sink in and you'll get an aha moment when you finally realize how it works and it, it makes that connection. So let's go ahead and run Putty. And for the host name, we're going to type researchtools.ccom.nh. And along here, you can see the connection types. The only one that you want to do is SSH. Save that session. Research tools. And hit save. There we go. So now it's in here as one of your saved uh, things. Unfortunately, I think that's only going to follow you on that computer. So if you switch computers, that alias isn't going to be there for your personal computers and your uh, Workstations, if you're a CECOM student here, that will stay on the workstation, but it won't go between computers with you. Go ahead and click open. So let's go ahead and you can just double click that and you should see something like this. So just double click the research tool things on your, on your saved uh, page. No, no, not UNH, NH. We have a special domain here. And then type in the name, Research Tools. The channel I just I created this morning on my own. With with Freenode, you can just create any channel you want. So you can create a channel that's just for two people and just have a chat there. Uh, you should still treat it as if it's not totally private, though. Everyone, go ahead and just click yes. Now I'll explain to you what you just said yes to. Yeah. I'm done there. Oh. You're in the Well. <laughs> All right. Let me double check this and see what's going on. Hmm. All right. Let's try this again here. All right. I tried it again and it went. I don't understand what that was about. It's possible our network had a hiccup, or Putty has some little quirk to it, but. You should be able to then, if you get to this point, type your CCOM username and password. Your CCOM username and password, the regular one. Oh. Save as Windows. OK, excellent. Delete that. I say, let's go ahead and delete this one over. There you go. The mouse, yeah, the mouse, when you're using this window, the mouse does absolutely nothing for you except for get you in trouble. You can select text, but if you try to like move things around and change things with the mouse, it's not going to work. This is a terminal only. Uh, there is no graphical anything to this, which is going to be very different for you guys. Hopefully, you'll start buying into the power of it pretty soon. OK, so we're going to go ahead and try some commands. We have 10 more minutes here, so we're going to give it a go and see how far we can get. And we're going to keep doing this stuff every class. Uh, so if you don't get it the first time through, that's expected. So just follow along. 
see what you think of it. So the first command that I'm going to teach you guys is who. And I think this one's more just fun uh, because we want to know who's logged into the computer. And there's a lot of you. So who is, uh, it's more just, you can see who's around. You might use this if you're working late at night and you want to see who's also logged into chat and say, hey, can we uh, start up an IRC so we can chat about the homework? More importantly though, you want to know what's in your directory. So ls is list files. And it's going to be really unexciting right now because there's nothing in there. ls is list files. Um, if we do ls and we give it some options, uh, it, it'll do more for us. So if we do ls dash a, so that's a minus sign and an a. This is list all ls dash l dash a is long list. That's going to show you all the details of each file. And it's going to show you some pretty crazy stuff. But we'll go ahead and do those. And so you can see what's in your directory. And I'll show you some. So if we do that, ls dash a, there's extra stuff that starts with a period. If I do ls dash la, we're going to get a lot of detail. <coughs> I'm just going to go up here and explain it slowly. And I'm going to explain it to you guys all throughout the semester because this is fairly complicated stuff. Is everybody able to get this command running? And if someone having trouble, do they mind pasting into the IRC channel? So that's a space. ls, a space, a minus sign, the letter L, and then the letter A. Or you can do, I did. I meant to do it like I did up there. You can do minus L space minus A. I, I apologize for that. What this is doing is listing all the files in your directory. And over here, this is the permissions for this. So there's a read, write, execute. Uh, who can read the file? Who can write to the file? Who can run this if it's a program? D if it's a directory. A dash if they don't have permission. We'll go into that a bunch as we hit it, but I just want to tell you what it is and then just sort of ignore that for now. Who owns the file? So my username is Schwer. So those things are all owned by me, except for we have this dot thing, which is kind of weird, and we have two dots. Those are two directories. Dot is your current directory, so it kind of points back to itself. It's like you're looking in a mirror. Dot dot, two periods, is the directory above it. So you guys are probably used to folders on Windows. It's just like folders. This is the folder that you would find this in. Inside of that, then we have a thing called groups, which is uh, this one. And this says what groups we're in. And you can give permissions where people can have a work group that does stuff and they all have write access or read access or something. We'll, we'll use things like groups when we need to deal with a serial port. We'll create a group that's all of you guys and you can access a serial port. And that group will then have permissions to work on the serial port. That's all not too exciting for you guys right now. Just forget all that. This is the date that the file was last changed. So you can see that a lot of this is fairly uh, recent. So I think my account got created on uh, August 25th. That's when I got my first files in here. Um, I made some changes today, so we have a September 01. And then there's a bunch of, these are the file names over here. And we'll go into more about the file names down the road. But anything that starts with a period is generally hidden. So we had to give it the A to be able to see all the things that are in there. So we're going to go and create some files and directories and look at them to see what's going on. Then these are all kind of weird ones. And we'll get some more normal stuff that you guys can look at. And feel free to ask any questions, because there's a lot going on here. We're in a directory. You know, you can hit Enter. It's OK to do. I'm going to also do some comments as we go along. Anything that starts with a, this pound character, the number sign, is a comment. So I can type ls this list files. Uh, everything from the, com the comment on is that. 
Let's create an empty file so we have some files to work with. There's a command called touch, which is, it doesn't seem very useful to most people when they start off, but then later on you'll find all kinds of weird times when you're like, oh, I know touch. So what touch does is it creates a file if none exists, or it will update the time on a file. So if we say touch my ship, and now we have a file that's called my ship and if we look here this zero right before this date so here's today's date and the time and it says zero that means there's zero bytes in that file it's empty this is in your home directory on the server so we're on this computer <coughs> and it's files on that computer does that make sense it's a great question we're going to be writing programs to process data so we can create another file. We can say touch another ship. And if we do another ls-l, we now have two files, another ship and my ship. And those two, we now have two files that we can kind of look at and, and do stuff. So we can say, we can also create some folders. So let's go ahead and create a folder. Those files, they're anything you want them to be. There's, um, I have, it's going to be in the future lectures, but file types and file names are not necessarily associated. So what's in a file doesn't necessarily depend on its name. So these could be full of multi-beam data, they could be full of databases, they could be your taxes. Right now I have nothing in them, but we'll look at commands that actually tell you what's in a file. Um, we're going to go ahead and let's create a directory, mkdir, and we'll call it a-folder. and make there another. Now watch that I'm doing capitalization here. On Linux, things are case sensitive with file names. So I can also make there another folder. And if we do a listing, we now have another folder and another folder that have the same exact characters, but are uppercase and lowercase. I'm going to warn you right now, and I'll keep warning you throughout the semester, don't do this. Because if you copy them to Windows or to a Mac, those two files are going to be the same thing and kill each other. I don't know which one's going to win, but one of them's going to die, and it's probably the one with your most important stuff in it. <laughs> so um, that's also going to teach us another command, rmdir, remove directory, and we'll say another folder. And I'm going to show you a quick trick that we're going to use a lot. So if I go back to ANO and I hit, I'm right here and I hit the tab key, it's right on the left hand side there. The shell is going to try and complete typing for you. So it's going to try and help you out. While you guys take some notes, I'm going to click right out the commands I've just done. So we had a touch, spell, touch file name, and that's going to create empty file or update time. We had mkdir and then folder name. And I will use the words folder and directory interchangeable. If you guys say folder, I'm going to assume you mean directory and that's what so Make a folder and rmdir remove all right, and with that, we're out of time. I'm going to go back through this on Tuesday. Please do create a wiki page for yourself. There are going to be the notes that I will post on Blackboard, a link to the notes that tell you how to do it. If you're not at CCOM, you're going to have to do it from here right now at some point. So I would say just come early to class uh, next time and create yourself a wiki page <coughs> or do it sometime today or tomorrow. And I will start going through more of the details of working with files and folders on the server. Yeah, question. Uh, if I want to remove a file, RM. So we're going to go back through this, and I assume that you're not going to get it for the first few times. There's a lot of little commands. And at first, there's just kind of noise. But down the road, when you start getting comfortable with them, you'll start combining them in ways that meet your needs. Everything you see here is all about little pieces working together. So if you have an iPhone or an Android phone, each app kind of lives on its own. This is the exact opposite. Everything wants to work together. 
every time you learn another little new command, it'll work with most of your other commands, and they can build off each other. And so every time you learn something new, it's sort of this incremental thing where you get this bigger and bigger set of knowledge, and you can pull off more and more data processing doing that. So the end goal is to make things chain together so that you can say, bring in some data from a sensor, pick out the parts you want, put them into a file, plot them, get rid of the junk you didn't need because you were just using it as temporary, and end up with a nice report at the end. So these little pieces, even though this doesn't feel like very much, it's going to get us towards being able to do some really powerful stuff. So on Monday, I'll show you guys, uh, I'll do a quick tutorial of grabbing some data off of our network and taking a peek at it. So we'll actually start doing stuff where we see real data and we'll do some really cool analysis and we'll see some plots that came from the uh, storm last weekend. Uh, one question that was asked before we go is how do we rename a file? Renaming is the same thing as moving. So MV is move, and that's you know, first name, new name. And I'll have wiki notes with all these commands in it, so uh, we'll, we'll get those up and we'll, I'll put them on Blackboard so you guys can see the links. And uh, basically just be links in Blackboard to that web page so with that. I'm sure you guys are looking for Great. Great job on the uh, getting everything done so fast. Uh, you made a lot more progress than I was hoping for, so it's very exciting.